So the NBA Finals are over, and the NBA media does exactly what they normally do. They spent an entire week gassing up Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, expecting them to pull off one of the greatest upsets in NBA history. And as soon as they don't do it, they get off some of the most nasty, egregious takes on these players I've ever seen in my lifetime. He won that championship, Arizona, you know what? It's him. He's the guy. So I think for Luka, that's all he needs. I mean, if you ask somebody who's the top five players in the league, Luka's going to be on that list, mm -hmm. right? I mean, for this year, he was third in the MVP voting. So all you need is that ring to solidify that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's my suit looking good. I don't know what that I see. <laughs> anyway, but so all I'm saying is this. To, to go with a narrative as far as the best player, you need them chips. Yeah. That's why it's hard to put Aaron Rodgers, his man, up there because... Hey, already? No, I'm just, I was giving an example for the people so they could, they could... I'm painting a picture. You know what I mean? Mm. Putting the... This nigga is so... How about I... Paint a picture for you, nigga. You go from that to saying that Luka is a top three, top five player in the NBA and that a championship would cement him as the best in the league. And in this video, you proceed. I'm not even going to say and waste any of y'all time. He proceeds to go on and just, uh, 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 oh, Luka. Ride this nigga to God knows how long just for him to turn around and then say that he's the worst all-star in NBA history. Luka is the worst all-star I've ever seen in my life. He can score the ball, he can pass the ball, he can rebound all that. He has no effort on defense. He don't want to play defense. He has he don't hustle for no loose balls. He don't hustle for no loose rebounds. I watched Drew Holiday about three yeah, to four times happened. get extra rebounds when he's guarding. I'm like, yo, he don't White. try. Yo, I watched Luka because like Kyrie deserves, but we don't give Luka no, 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 no blame no. for nothing. Luka. We don't get Luka none when Luka has been the best player on this team. And mind you, I cannot reiterate this enough, bro. Just last week, I'm, I, I kid you, last week, he was trashing how bad the Dallas Mavericks was and propping up how much of a carry job Luka has to do, saying that he did a better carry job than what Jokic was doing back when Jamal Murray and MPJ were hurt. And now all of a sudden, oh, we we, we, we always trash Kyrie. I want people to realize that Kyrie Irving just came off of one of the worst performances from a volume score in finals history. That's how bad Kyrie was in the finals. So the fact that we can sit here and say, we give Kyrie a... No, nah, I don't think so. I don't I don't think none of you all give enough uh, flat to Kyrie. Y'all thought that Kyrie was going to go in there and perform against a team that he struggled with for the past two to three years to the tune in which you all thought one of the greatest upsets of all time was going to occur. That's what y'all thought Kyrie was. The problem is, is that you all dick suck these niggas so much that when they lose, you didn't have to turn around and criticize them to outrageous claims as well because you think that's balancing and tipping the scale without you just acknowledging how fucking dumb you were from the beginning to even sit here and say these outrageous claims in the first place. That's the real problem. The real problem is that you're just too egotistical to acknowledge how dumb you are. That's what it is. I guess I don't know if he got injured or what, or, or a foul. He's laying on the ground. Yeah. The ball's going this way. He's yeah. still there. Yeah. They, they scored it, and now he's still just getting up. Any, anybody else you watch, when they get on the ground, they get their butts up and get on defense. I want people to realize this man is referring to the time in which he shot the ball and Lucas shot it, and he fell on the floor and he thinks that Luka is supposed to be the first man back. This is just like basketball one-on-one. -on -one. Sure, you would want Luka to get more effort to get back on defense after shooting, but the person who shoots the ball is not supposed to be the first one back. The perimeter players who aren't crashing the glass are the ones supposed to be the first one back because they didn't shoot a shot in that possession. Those are the ones who need to be the first one back, not Luka Doncic. But my nigga, you don't know what you're talking about. And as a sidebar, everything that this man just sat here and complained about Luka, the whining, the complaining, the lack of defense, the inconsistent effort, bro, that's been Luka for the last two to three years in the NBA. Everybody's been saying that about Luka. And so you knew that before you went into the series with Luka. He was that player before. He was that the year before, the month before, the week before, the day before. He was, he's was. he been that player since the beginning of his career. Matter of fact, before he even entered the NBA. He's been that nigga. He's been him. So to sit here and to say that oh, oh my god, I'm just gonna sit here and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start now making outrageous players. He's the worst superstar. Like, bro, what are you talking about? What are you discussing? Just say you didn't watch him and move on. Move the fuck on. But stop saying him making hyperbolic statements because you didn't watch him play. We just came off of conversations with, is this the greatest scoring yeah. duo that we've yeah. ever seen? Like, we've, we've had those conversations. Kyrie Irving was pressing. This wasn't the Kyrie Irving that we've seen when the Dallas Mavericks, after the trade deadline, started rolling. This wasn't the Kyrie Irving that we've seen all the way up to the final series. And what I mean by that is Kyrie Irving was making all the right plays. Whether he was getting to the bucket, passing the rock, whether he was getting to the bucket, 
right finishing, doing what he's doing. He was making all the right plays. But he wasn't, though. This is the thing that also just bothers me about this Kyrie Irving conversation. You all specifically highlight moments in Kyrie Irving's runs and his play to best suit whatever narrative you all want to push instead of talking about who Kyrie Irving was. Kyrie was amazing in the Minnesota Timberwolves series. Way better than I thought he was going to be. But just go back in OKC. He was literally up and down every other game. One game, he'd be great. The next game, he'd be bad. The next game, he'd be great. Another game, he'd be bad. I think he had back, he had two games, two or three games where he was held to under like 15 points and two games where he was held under 10 points. I think he had two nine-point games in that series. So to sit here and to say like, oh, leading into this, he was so amazing. No, he, he had great series, great moments, but he also had bad ones as well. But you all being in denial about who he was against a team that really matched up well with him. Kyrie in this series, y'all are all, huh, I don't know. I just couldn't guess. I couldn't guess that Kyrie's going to struggle. He put up the same stat line this run that he's normally put up against the Celtics for the last two to three years. Who Kyrie Irving was in this series in particular against the Boston Celtics is who he was against the Boston Celtics in a regular season this year, in the playoffs last year, in a regular season the year before that, and the year before that. He's been the same player. He's 1-14 in the last 15 games against the Celtics, and the stat line he posted up, and how he looked, and how he was missing shots, how he struggled to get around length, it's the same player. He's the same player. That's y'all who saw a bunch of anti twin 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 skill 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 and you thought something else was going to happen that hasn't happened in 15 attempts now. I think Luka Doncic is closer to Kevin Durant than he is Dirk Nowitzki. These ex-NFL players, bro, they have no idea what they're talking about. I, just as a sidebar to this gentleman here, because it's clear that you don't know dick about anything about when it comes to basketball, saying he's closer to Kevin Durant than Dirk Nowitzki is a compliment because Kevin Durant is a better player. That's not a form of criticism, but we'll, we'll let him continue because I'm pretty sure he's going to still say some shenanigans. And I bring that up because the Mavs stayed the course with Dirk Nowitzki. They had the failure. They got to the finals. Didn't work out. They were able to get back there eventually, and they beat LeBron James and Abs Miami Heat. They got that done. But we never quit question Dirk Nowitzki's work ethic. We never question his commitment to trying to improve his body and his game in order to contend in the championship rounds. We never question his his disposition, his mentality. We're questioning all of those things with Luka. Bro, this is what I'm talking about when some of these people, y'all, I can tell y'all weren't around back then. Y'all have no idea about anything about NBA history or any historic precedents or anything about any of these players' career because when you say dumb shit like this, people were questioning Dirk all day every day at that point in time because be very mindful. Dirk Dirk not only lost in the finals in 06, he lost in the finals while underperforming by a wide margin. Dirk was really bad in the 06 finals. And in the next year, they had the best record in the NBA. Dirk would go on to win league MVP, number one seed in the West, and get knocked out in the first round by the We Believe Warriors. After 2007, it was constant questioning of, can Dirk get it done? Can Dirk be the best player? Is he too soft? Because that's what a lot of people were saying about Europeans at that point in time. And so from 2000, 2007 up until 2010 no the the rap on Dirk was that he was not that great of a player that he was overrated that he was soft that he needed to develop a post game a lot of people are questioning his me mental toughness and there are literally there's like an article where he's being compared to Tony Kukoc um however you defeated your own argument with that last sentence that you just threw out there he'll come back in better shape that is the indictment against him See, what happens is you don't get to analyze just somebody's game. You get to analyze why there are deficiencies in the game. If you have deficiencies because there's just something that you needed to work on, like you, you get your handle better, get your jump shot better, or whatever the case may be, that's fine. Game three, you're absolutely right. You get over that, you throw that aside. But what's going to live with Luka more so or just as much as complaining about the refs? And again, he didn't do that the last two games, really. So, again, he made amends. But... You looked at him, it's like, you 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 got to get in your bag this offseason. You got to get yourself in shape. You got to commit yourself to be in condition. That is not something any athlete should ever want to have said about them. That your conditioning played a role in impeding your progress from being even more elite than you showed. And we know that Luca, the Luca is elite. He's a superstar. Make no mistake about it. This is the thing that really bothers me about this conversation about Luca and like him being in shape. A, these are questions and concerns that we had about him alongside his defensive effort, alongside him complaining with the refs. These are all things that you all knew before the series even began, so you still decided to pick him. Luca was going to go into this series in the same shape that he was before in the, in the prior series. Like, who he was as a player was the exact same. So any questions and concerns you had about him were 
still prevalent. They were still there. If you just go back and look at the conference finals, he wasn't really giving that much effort defensively either. He just could hide defensively because they didn't have the same type of personnel as a Boston Celtics, but he was the exact same nigga. He was the same defender. I don't know why y'all are like, oh my God, he, he can't defend. Oh, he's so out of shape. Ah. Like, nigga, he was the same one. It was just that they were going up against a team where defensively, he can be hidden way better. They can secure and, and put him in much better situations, much easier in that series and in this series, but he's still the same player. But moreover, I have never, and I do mean I've never, ever, ever seen anyone, and we are just, and I get it. Luca said that, don't talk about it, don't worry about it. I get it. But, bro, we all know that Luca wasn't 100% healthy, that he had a knee issue the entire time, and on and off throughout the entire playoff run, the brother was bleeding from his knee. And the fact that that is being escaped from any of these conversations is crazy to me, because in the beginning of the playoffs, when he was matched up against the Los Angeles Clippers, defensively, he looked significantly better. Does that mean that Luca's a great defender? No. Does that mean that Luca is going to lock down Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown? No. But does that mean that I could have expected better effort and better uh, outcomes defensively out of him if he may have been 100%? Certainly. But to see him to ignore that fact that we were watching a man clearly hampered, the, the brother on the other side of the floor also couldn't get by Al Horford and Sam Hauser consistently. He was settling for jump shots when he was getting switched on Kristaps Porzingis. Like, the brother clearly was not 100% healthy. We knew that heading into the series, heading into game two, heading into game three, like we knew that already. So I, I'm, I just, again, I get floored and blown away when we had these conversations. Not to say that he wasn't in 100% health, not to say that he can't be in better shape because I'm not denying that, but these are things that we also knew heading into the series. So now all of a sudden you holding that to his feet. Y'all are only doing it because he lost because he was in the same shape in this series and he wasn't the last. Hey man, this is ridiculous. It's crazy. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll see y'all later. Peace.